Before we start, there are a few things I would like to, to say. Uh, some thank yous to some people who have been very instrumental in putting this evening together tonight, and uh, they need a little bit of recognition. Um, some of our board members who have worked awfully hard, uh, Donna McAdam, Ron Indoor, Paul Grondon, Chris Curry, Ardella Houle, Carol Myers, Nancy Boyle, Dick Coleman, Sister Judith, and Jean Jones. I think they deserve a round of applause. And I hope everyone has a copy of our program tonight, and I'd like to thank all the people who have advertised and who, who uh, put their name in as a friend of hospice. And, um, you know, you folks have a lot of power, and one of the things that helps us put this show on is to know that we have our expenses covered beforehand. And that's only possible by the advertising that we receive in the program. So in the next couple of weeks, if you can remember it, whenever you go into one of the stores or businesses that advertise the program, tell them how much you appreciated uh, the show tonight and how much you were, were thankful that, that they helped uh, make this all possible. And the ones who really helped to make it all possible um, are our corporate sponsors because they're the ones who put the money up that made sure that we had really the, ex the expenses covered. And I would like to mention them just one more time. Uh, Kendall Insurance, the Seacoast Radio Shack Associate Stores, the Summersworth Bank, Deprezio Lumber and Garage, uh, the Profile Bank, the Stratford County Board of Realtors, uh, our friends at AM 1270 WTSN, and Foster's Daily Democrat. So, yes. <laughs> Further ado, I'd like to bring out our MC for tonight, um, Jerry French. Jerry? <laughs> There's a reason why I have this get up on. Uh, tonight I'm going to try to play for you. We're, uh, the last two shows I've just done the MCing, but uh, they finally got me into the uh, playing end of the uh, banjo. And uh, uh, the opening act tonight uh, is a uh, a new band that's just been formed, a Dixieland band that started in Hampton, was started by Ken Myers. And uh, since we're a little bit behind schedule and uh, it's a hot evening, we want to keep the show rolling right along for you. Without further ado, please give this brand new band, this is their first appearance as a concert like this. They've played before, but this is the first time they ever played as big an audience like that. Let's have a nice welcoming hand for the Red Beans and Rice.
tough, tough to open the show and it's tough and yeah, none of your hands seem to be doing the things you want to do. Now we're going to do a, another Dixieland number called Canal Street Blues. <laughs> and I was stupid enough at rehearsal to agree to do the opening kind of banjo stuff and uh, I wish I had given that up, I can tell you that right now. Ah! Oh. Oh. <laughs>
you uh, saw the show last year up in Rochester? Oh, we have another great show. How many of you saw the show here two years ago? Oh, it's marvelous to have a repeat audience. We really do, and it's such, for such a good cause. I'm so happy you took the time to come out. Uh, you should have banjo music once a year, whether you like it or not, right? <laughs> whether you like it or not. Just a few special announcements. There should be no smoking. No smoking, and also uh, should be no eating and food in the uh, in the auditorium. I guess uh, there will be, by the way, refreshments served at halftime. And those of you maybe sneak out a little early, probably get a drink. I wish I could say that we had air conditioning. We don't, and it was going to start any minute. It isn't. Uh, <laughs> I could tell you what's broken. It's kind of, but it isn't. It's not. It's not going to come at all. So what you see is what you got. And if some of you really feel free to get up and get a little air, I know how hard it must be for some of you out there, and uh, come back. You, there's plenty of shows so that if you step out, you can still hear. Uh, by the way, I want to thank the rhythm section that played uh, uh, John Stewart on the tuba, and also uh, uh, Herb Webster on the piano, uh, played our little introduction music, and they'll play again at halftime. Or not half time, that's football game. <laughs> They'll play at uh, intermission, and when you hear them play, that means we're going to start the show very shortly, so please come back in your seats. Uh, okay. I'm going to tell one joke, and then I'm not going to tell any more jokes to, uh, until the next act comes on. <laughs> I really am more comfortable doing this than doing that. That's hard. That's tough. Those guys work hard. Did you? And this is a. This is a. a you're going to be a groaning on this. But you're going to tell it, I'll swear you'll tell us your two or three times. This is about the chicken that came into the library. Well, first off, that's kind of stupid, a chicken coming in the library, walked up to the librarian. Got any librarians in here? No, well anyways, it's, this, this, is not an, this is not derogatory to librarians, but the chicken walked up to the library and he went, Boop. Second thing, uh, so the librarian gave him a book, or gave the chicken a book, and the chicken went out. <laughs> Ten minutes later, the chicken comes back, brings the book back, and says, book, book. <laughs> <laughs> so she gave him two books. Chicken laughed. Fifteen minutes later, he comes back, book, book, book. <laughs> the librarian, you know, gave him three books, and uh, got kind of concerned what this chicken was doing with those books, so she followed the chicken. He goes through the field, over the hill, and down by the down by the book and down there on the book, sitting on this great big lily pond, lily pad in this pond, is a, a big frog. And the chicken's in front of me, says, read it, read it, read it. <laughs> hey, I got you there, man. <laughs> we about set up on, uh, we got two chairs, they're gonna, everything's super. Okay, this, uh, These next uh, two uh, gentlemen uh, go under the name of the Banjo Express. Uh, I would re rename them. I really would if I had anything to say about their act. Uh, I'd call them the old smoothies because every time I hear them, they get smoother and smoother. Uh, many of you would know from... Uh, <laughs> the joke must have been on me. Anyways, uh, uh, father and son, they come from old man. And, uh, and they, every year they get better and better. Now that the old man's retired and going to put a little work in on the banjo, they'll probably be getting even a little better than that. Please give a warm welcome to Art and Dawn Willett.
become very popular with the banjo is the five string banjo and we like to give you our imitation of the five string banjo this is a song called mama don't allow and in this house mama allows everything <laughs>
this kid in a year had learned so much about the man joe and so much about the people in the banjo business he took a week and went down and studied with the flying dutchman if you don't know the flying dutchman that's don van pelter in fact don was i was going to try to get him at this show because he's believe it or not playing up in the uh balsams uh this week and playing up in northern maine and he agreed next year that uh we would try to make it so that he could play here but don comes from texas and uh he is just an incredible uh plectrum banjo player and peter went down and worked with him for a whole week down there studying and he come back with some really fantastic stuff uh this he hopes to play in uh, san francisco at the big uh, peninsula banjo jamboree out there with eddie tagawa i know these names don't mean anything to you it didn't used to mean anything to me but if you're banjo lovers year after year you're gonna come back every year because we're gonna be here every year hopefully and pretty soon you'll know all these banjo players i'm not going to do any more yakking on this one because uh, peter has a fantastic show worked out for you of four great numbers peter mazoyan from portland maine please give him a warm welcome <laughs>
on the 1986 poster child for Planned Parenthood? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get it. Whew. Well, you know, I think the banjo is capable of any kind of music at all. And probably one of this country's greatest composers is a man named George Gershwin. And this is probably one of his most memorable songs. <laughs>
thank you, thank you. And I've prepared another special song for you tonight. <laughs> no, I love to do songs that you probably wouldn't expect to hear on the banjo. But these are songs that I'm sure you're going to love. And this one was made popular by Mr. Vaughn Monroe back in the 40s. I think those of you who like country western may like this. You look a little tired. 
He says, "How come you look so tired and worn?" She says, "Well, I haven't been sleeping so well lately." He says, "My husband he bought a new bed spring, and he says it's so soft that when the train at 303 goes through, it vibrates me right out of bed." And so the next door neighbor says, "I don't believe that. I don't think they have. I don't think I've ever seen a spring that soft." She says, "I'm telling you, the spring is that soft." So she says, look, you jump over the fence, come upstairs, I'll show you how soft that spring is. <laughs> you like this joke, it's building, right? So he says, all right, I jumps over the fence, up the stairs, and she says, now look at that spring, look how soft it is. So she says, look, it's almost time for the 202, and this is in the afternoon, she says, it's almost time for the 202, she says, I'll jump into bed, and I'll show you that train will vibrate me right out of that bed. He says, okay, so she jumps into bed. And she's waiting and waiting, and pretty soon she says, look, it's, it's not here yet. She says, why don't you jump into the bed, too, and it'll vibrate you right out of the bed. <laughs> you like this, right? Come joke's building. <laughs> At that point, her husband comes home early, unexpected. He comes up the stairs, he comes in the bedroom. He says, what, what's going on here? And the next door neighbor says, you're not going to believe this, but we're waiting for a train. <laughs> serious because uh, you're gonna you're gonna have the opportunity to to hear one of one of the what I think are the greatest innovative banjo players in in, in the world today. Uh, he just breaks all of breaks through all of the uh, barriers of uh, the banjo playing, and every time you hear him, he's playing playing it different like no one else does. Uh, Eddie has credits that go way way back, and he has. Music in all forms. He likes all kinds of music. The classics, he likes jazz, he likes Dixieland and everything. He's played on The Tonight Show. He's played on The Mike Douglas Show. He's a regular, regular attender at all of the jazz festivals around. In fact, he just got back from a Hungarian jazz festival, which he went over to play. And on the way back, he stopped in England. And when I was serving him a beer in Hampton, <laughs> telling him it was just a short drive up here, which I'm sure he's going to get me for, uh, he was saying, everybody in England was asking me, how come you're not staying for the wedding? You know, he said, I don't want to stay for the wedding, i got to get back. got to get back to Dover. I'm going to play in Dover. Without any further ado, I give you Eddie Davis. Eddie? I could have done another 15 minutes. He could have gone on for hours yet, couldn't he? <laughs> He, he would planned it that way to make me late. When he left, he said, it's only 10 minutes or 15 minutes, and you can't miss it. It's a good half hour, Jerry. I don't know what to... I'd like to start out by doing a tune that was written by a banjo player that should have an enormous place in history. He was a black banjo player from New Orleans, and he was the banjo player with uh, Jelly Roll Morton on the Red Hot... Peppers records. He was also the banjo player with Louis Armstrong on Hot Fives and Hot Sevens. He ended up in California in Disneyland playing with the group that he led called the Young Men of New Orleans on the paddle boat that used to go around through Disneyland, if any of you saw him out there. He wrote several pieces. This is one from the Hot Five group of Louis Armstrong's entitled Oriental Strut. His name was Johnny St. Cyr. <laughs>
tunes that were either related to banjo players or groups that had outstanding manager players in them and so i'm going to do another tune that i do quite often that was from the duke ellington orchestra this is from the period they called the jungle music which was mainly the time where they at the cotton club in new york city which they made that horrible movie about i thought it was going to be about music and it turned out to be about gangsters well that shows you <laughs> anyway uh during the cotton club time and duke's uh jungle music he had a banjo player by the name of uh, freddie guy that uh never played many solos but he if you listen close he supplied wonderful rhythm for all the original tunes like black and tan fantasy and all those very important pieces that started the symphonic style jazz that duke did the one i'm going to do is a tune that was recorded in 1927 again 1929 uh, with the jungle band and uh, both times it had tuba and banjo in it later on the duke recorded it in the 40s and 50s with a much larger different sounding orchestra but originally as i say it was banjo and tuba it's the mooch by duke ellington
who claimed he invented jazz and as far as that part of it goes he perhaps he did before that time there were various different other styles of jazz starting up there were the blues and the brass bands of new orleans which were playing the marches and things but these ragtime bands were playing tunes that were written around the turn of the century some more so including things like uh, beautiful stephen foster songs and things like that and uh uh, there was also a black composer at that time that wrote, Carry me back to old Judy. Very pretty things. And that's where it came from there. But one of the things that the ragtime did at the turn of the century, it took a little bit of a turn and we showed a little respect, or non-respect as the case may be, to the American Indian. And in the ragtime material, they wrote a lot of songs like Silver Heels and tunes like that. This is one from 1907, written by... Thomas S. Allen. It was recorded by the Bunk Johnson Band from New Orleans, and it was recorded later also by various of the people of George Lewis and that ilk. It's a thing entitled Big Chief Battle Axe. See if you can hear the Indians in this. sat and played this tune for me. 
because it was Tommy Dorsey's theme song, and he did a lot of the arranging and all for that. His name was Carmen Master, and so I'm going to do a little bit of, of Tommy Dorsey's theme song for a second, and then I'm going to go into uh, uh, Midnight in Moscow, I think.
second half of the show, and we'd like really to finish it right on time. By the way, uh, for those of you who uh, want to hear some uh, hangout banjo playing, uh, the players, or as many of the players that can, are going down to the Ramada Inn, the old Ramada Inn, it's now called a Friendship Inn. Uh, we're going to go down there, we're going to jam for about an hour in the lounge down there. If you want to come down, you'll hear all kinds of music, maybe all hear you know, songs that you'd like to have us play. Uh, come on down and uh, have a drink and maybe kill the rest of the evening. Those of you who are local, we'd love to have you down there. Now, this next uh, group is uh, a group that I started myself. I'm not playing with them, but I'm awful proud of them. The reason I'm not playing with it would require another change and then another change, and I decided that this group could do it without me. Uh, banjo playing alone is one thing. When you get a group of them together, that music just kind of gets into you and under your skin. And there's, there's no substitution for seven or eight banjo players playing together and playing some of the songs that I know you love to hear. With that, let me introduce the Banjo Ragtimer.
guess uh, a curtain man had a had a special. <laughs> I just couldn't not come out and play with those guys. I really enjoyed them. And, uh, forgive me for being out of out outfit and hot. Uh, we have a change in the program. Cynthia Say won't be here. Uh, too bad because I love Cynthia and she does such a fantastic job. And uh, uh, she called me uh, a week and a half ago and had an opportunity to go to Japan for two weeks to play with a Dixieland band and then to play with uh, four or five uh, banjo groups in Japan on a tour. And uh, I'm sure I told her that you folks would understand that that doesn't come along very often. So I said, Cynthia, go. We'll look for you next year. So uh, in her place, though, she uh, immediately uh, suggested that I get in touch with Bob Bada. And Bob was here two years ago, and I called Bob in Long Island, and uh, Bob has agreed to come up and uh, substitute for Cynthia. He's regularly playing with the New York Banjo Ensemble, Eddie Davis, and uh, Cynthia, and uh, Frank Vignola, I think, plays at the group. Uh, Bob uh, studied underneath Roy Schmeck, if uh, some of you know, he's a pretty good banjo player, probably doesn't mean nothing lot to you, but to uh, banjo players it does. Uh, he's currently working on a master's degree in music theory, uh, he also uh, teaches uh, uh, computer science and is uh, very into computer design music and all of that stuff. He's also working on a BS degree in finances. And uh, besides that, then he plays around on the banjo. And uh, if I could play like him, I think I could, might be able to make a living at the banjo. So with that, and no further ado, I give you Bob Bada from Long Island. Please welcome.
bunch of banjo players wandering around backstage and I was told that there might even be a few in the audience and there are a couple that I hope I know out there because uh, one of them is who I'm dedicating this number to. He asked me, his name is Alan, and he asked me to play this number quite often and so uh, for him, I'm, uh, it's you can blame it all on Alan, I'm going to subject you to some vocals here.
be back. Bob will be back with uh, with Eddie later on uh, when they do a little of their uh, New York banjo ensemble tunes that they've worked up together. Uh, trying to think of another joke. I used up quite a lot of jokes uh, this evening. Really, I uh, I'm. Uh, uh, do you about that? This one's a little shaded. <laughs> Get a joke about the gal that advertised her husband in the paper. She said, I want a fellow that don't beat me and won't run away and is good in bed. Calls such and such a number or address. Three days later, a guy knocks on the door. She opens the door and there's this fellow sitting there. He's in a wheelchair, hasn't got any arms, hasn't got any legs. She says, can I help you? He says, yes, I'm answering your ad. She says, you're answering my ad? She says, yes. She says, well, you know, uh, uh, he says, look, I haven't got any arms, I can't beat you, right? She says, yes, that's true. She says, I haven't got any legs, I can't run away, right? She says, yeah, but how do I know if you're any good in bed? She said, I rang the doorbell, didn't I? This next, this next chap, uh, you've met him before. He's part of uh, the Bad Joe Express, and I don't have to tell you more, except that he, 19, uh, I think it was uh, 83, he went, he won, went, he, he won the uh, uh, Lowell Historical Banjo Fiddle Contest up in Lowell. He was the champion up there on the Plectrum Banjo. And uh, let's give him another warm welcome. He's got some solo numbers he'd like to do for you. He's really come along a long ways in the banjo. Don Mullet. Don? Thanks very much. This first number is from the 1920s, and it's one of my favorite songs. It's called After You've Gone. means to 
to me Dreams of days that used to be Those memories of those I love the best When shadows fall And trees whisper days end My heart is ever when Winding home
Rick Jam and, and I've heard you play Tiger Rag and I, I'd like to have you do it for the group. Would you please? Early on, Bob Bada mentioned uh, Roy Schmeck, and this is one of Roy's big hits that was recorded by him also, and it became a very popular song in the 1920s. This is Tiger Rag. Jokes and uh, everybody liked me, so I left. Uh, 
I left feeling I like I'd competed number one. Without any further ado, give Mike a nice warm welcome. Mike's playing on the boat and uh, out of the Viking Queen, Mike Asher. Mike.
suit on to be here and we've been playing together quite a quite a while and every time we get together we try to play dueling banjo and dueling to we started this out originally as a it was a very low budget banjo band without banjos so we couldn't do dueling banjos so we had to do we tried it dueling clarinet dueling harp dueling piano dueling piccolo but finally we settled down with dueling tuba and you'll see why don't let him screw up
song that won me the title called Sweet Georgia Brown.
Davis and that was Bob Barta, that's right. And we're half of the New York Banjo Ensemble. We started out going to do uh, all kinds of things with musicians here, but some of them ended up in Japan and all around the world. Miss Cynthia Sayers, who's really the leader of the Banjo Ensemble, is in Nagasaki right now, huh? Hot ginger and dynamite. <laughs> uh, she, uh, she's doing a six-week tour over in, in Japan, and so we came in here as this two of us, and we decided to do some straight ragtime for a change, paraphrase version. That first piece was by James Scott. It's entitled Grace and Beauty Rag, if you didn't recognize it. And we're going to do a couple Scott Joplin pieces here now. This is the version from the, uh, sort of, from the motion picture, The Sting. And it's not written by Marvin Hamlish. It's written by Scott Joplin. It's uh, a Mexican serenade, solace.
kind of sentimental when we get to the end of the show because i know how hard those performers practice and the hours that they put in to try to please you tonight and their reward is really your applause which you've been very very gracious with especially under such a very hot and humid conditions you your endurance is so high i i applaud you and i'm sure all of band of players do we're going to give you a little bit of a chance to uh give them another round of applause as i give them a final curtain call let's hear it for the red beans and rice For the Banjo Express. And Peter Bazoyan. Peter. And uh, Bob Batter. Bob. And uh, Mike Asham. Good night all. Give each performer as they leave a little 